हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम बैक टू इंजीनियर्स अकेडमी डू सब्सक्राइब माय चैनल इफ यू हैव डन इट येट नाउ लेट्स सॉल्व दिस प्रॉब्लम विच सो नाउ लेट्स से दैट द टेंशन एंड केबल ए वी इज लेट्स से टी वन एंड द टेंशन एंड केबल ए सी इज लेट्स से टी टू एंड लेट्स से द टेंशन एंड केबल ए डी इज लेट्स से टी थ्री सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव टू रेप्रेजेंट this t1 t2 and t3 as a cartesian vectors so now we know that t1 vector this will be equal to its magnitude times the unit vector from a to b since t1 is acting from a to b and we know that the position vector from uh, the unit vector from a to b is the position vector from a to b divided by the magnitude of that position vector from a to b So now we can write that t1 magnitude, which is not known, and the position vector from a to b can be determined by traveling from a along the x, y, and z until we reach point b. So the position vector from a to b is that we need to travel six feet distance in the negative y. This is the positive y, so we need to travel in the opposite direction of the y. So this will be we can write that this is minus six. j so first we need to travel this distance then we need to travel this distance and this is also in the negative x direction and this is 3 feet distance so we need to travel 3 feet in the negative i direction so we will reach this point and after this we need to travel 2 feet in the positive z direction that is in the positive k so this is plus 2k and now we have to find the magnitude of this position vector so the magnitude will be the squares of each component and then we will take the square roots the square root of the sum right so this is 6 square plus 2 square under the square root and if we determine this using the calculator so this will be equal to 7 feet right so now we can say that this whole magnitude is 7 so this is like and now we can say if i further simplify this so this will be t1 divided by 7 into that position vector so now from this we can write that t1 now we will multiply this with the magnitude of each component so this will give us minus 3 t1 divided by 7 i minus 6 divided by 7 t1 j and plus 2 t1 divided by 7 k so this is t1 right and its units will be this will be in pounds similarly t2 42 we need to repeat the same procedure t2 is t2 magnitude time the unit vector from a to c since t2 is acting from a to c so this is the unit vector from unit vector from a to c and uh unit vector from a to c and we know that the unit vector from a to c is the position vector from a to c the position vector from a to c divided by its magnitude so now t2 and the dot product with the unit vector from a to c so we have to find the position vector from a to c so for the position vector from a to c it is we need to travel 6 feet again in the negative y direction that is in the negative j so i will write to minus 6 j so we will reach here then we need to travel this distance in the positive i direction that is 2 feet so i will write plus 2 i and then once we reach here we need to travel 3 feet in the positive k so this is plus 3 k and divided by 2 square plus 6 square plus 3 square under the square root this is the magnitude and again if we find this magnitude this will be equal to 7 so again we have and this is t2 right so we can write it as t2 divided by 7 so again we need to multiply this with the magnitude of each component so this will be we can write that t2 is equal to 2 divided by 7 t2 uh, i 
minus 6 divided by 70 2j and plus 3 divided by 72 k so this is the uh, cartesian vector representation of the tension which is acting from a to c represented by t2 now t3 so t3 vector will be equal to t3 magnitude and the unit vector from a to d since t3 is acting from a to d this is acting from a to d and again we can write that the unit vector from a to d is the position vector from a to d divided by its magnitude so this is the position vector from a to d so this is we can write that this is t3 and the position vector from a to d is from a we need to travel three feet in the positive y and then four feet in the positive k so this is plus three j three feet in the positive y means that three feet in the positive j and four feet in the positive k and there is no need to travel along i since point d is in the y z plane and then we have to find this magnitude this magnitude is three square plus four square zero square and under the square root and this magnitude will give us this will give us five right so this is equal to five so now we can say that this is t3 divided by five so now we can write that T3 Cartesian vector. So T3 divided by 5 into 0 will give us 0i, then uh, this ratio into 3 and then 4. So this will give me plus 3 divided by 5 T3j and plus 4 divided by 5 T3k. So we have t1 t2 and t3 cartesian vectors now the weight is acting in the downward direction so we can say that the weight vector will be equal to magnitude times the unit vector and this uh, vector is acting in the downward direction that is in the negative case okay, so this is minus k so now since this crate is in equilibrium so the summation of forces along x y and z must be equals to zero so we have to find the summation of forces along x equals to zero so we have to add up all the i components so this is uh, the i component of t1 is minus 3 divided by 71 so minus 3 divided by 71 then the i component of t2 is 2 divided by 71 plus 2 divided by 7 uh, sorry 2 divided by 72 and the i component of t3 is 0 and the i component of the weight is also 0 since it is only acting in the k direction so this is equal to 0 now from this we can say if I multiply this whole equation with 7 so so this 7 will cancel out and this 7 will cancel out so we will be left with minus 3t1 plus 2t2 equals to 0 or we can say that 2t2 is equal to 3t1 and from this we can say that t2 is equal to 3 divided by 2t1. So let's say this is our equation 1. Similarly, then we have to apply the summation of forces along y. That must be equal to 0. So for that, we have to add up all the j components, right? So the j component of t1 is minus 6 divided by 71. And then uh, minus 6 divided by 72. And 3 divided by 5 t3. And there is no j component of the weight. So I will write minus 6 divided by 71 minus 6 divided by 72 and plus 3 divided by 5 t3 and this is equal to 0. So now we know that t2 in terms of t1 so I can write that this is minus 6 divided by 7 t1 minus 6 divided by 7 into 
instead of t2 we need to write 3 divided by 2 t1 since we want to find t3 in terms of t1 as well so this is plus 3 divided by 5 t3 equals to 0 so now this 6 will be cancelled out with this 2 so we will have 3 let's say this is so if we simplify this this is minus And now if I multiply this whole equation with 35, right, the LCM of all these, the 7 and 5, the LCM is 35. So we need to multiply this whole equation or we can say that we need to multiply each term with 35. So if I multiply this term with uh, 35, so we will be left with, uh, so 35 uh, divided by 7 will give us 5. So that will be 5 into minus 6 t1 similarly here we will have 35 divided by 7 so we will have 5 into 9 t1 and here we will have 35 divided by 5 so we will have 7 so 7 into 3 t3 and this is equal to 0 so this will give me minus 30 t1 and minus 45 t1 plus 21 t3 this is equal to 0 so so when we add uh, this t1 term so this will give me minus 75 t1 plus 21 t3 and this is equal to 0 or we can say that 21 t3 is equal to 75 t1 or we can say that t3 is equal to 75 divided by 21 t1 and now we need to add up all the k components the summation of forces along the the summation of forces along the z axis is that must be equals to zero so now we need to add up all the k components so now the k component of t1 is 2 divided by 7 t1 so this must be equal to zero so this is plus 2 divided by 7 t1 and then the k component of t2 is 3 divided by 7 t2 so plus 3 divided by 7 t2 and the k component of t3 is 4 divided by 5 so plus 4 divided by 5 t3 and then we have the weight that is minus w so minus w and this is equal to 0 and if i bring this w to the other side of equation so this all of these will be equal to plus w now this equation will give us t1 in terms of uh, the weight since we know uh, t2 in terms of t1 and similarly we know t3 in terms of t1 so i will substitute t2 and t3 in terms of t1 in this equation so this will be 2 divided by 7 t1 plus 3 divided by 7 t2 so instead of t2 we need to write this this is 3 divided by 2 t1 then plus 4 divided by 5 and instead of t3 we need to write 75 divided by 21 t1 so this is 75 divided by 21 t1 equals to the weight now we can add up all the coefficients of t1 right since this will be uh, 2 divided by 7 plus 3 into 3 divided by 7 into 2 is 14 and then plus 4 into 75 divided by 5 into 21 so this gives me 53 divided by 14 this is 53 divided by 14 t1 equals to w and now the problem 355 says that determine the maximum weight of the crate that can be suspended from cables a b a c and a d so that the tension developed in any one of the cables does not exceed 250 pounds so now after this we will assume let's assume that t3 carries the maximum tension and that maximum tension is given in the problem statement that is 250 pounds so this is 250 so 
so t3 is equal to 250 pounds so if we assume that t3 is maximum then from this equation we can say that t1 is equal to 21 divided by 75 if we cross multiply multiply by t3 so this equation will give us t1 if t3 carries a maximum load of 250 pounds so this is 21 multiplied by 250 divided by 75 so this gives me t1 equals to 70 pounds so t1 is 70 pounds and similarly if t1 is 70 pounds then we have t2 in terms of t1 so we can say that this is 3 divided by 2 multiplied by 70 so this is 105 so t2 is 105 pounds and as we can see that if t3 is if t3 is 250 pounds so t1 and t2 must be less than 250 pounds and as we can see that our assumption is accurate since t1 is less than 250 pounds and t2 is less than 250 pounds if any of these two was greater than 250 pounds so then in that case our assumption was uh, would be not right right so if if we assume that t3 is greater than 250 so t1 and t2 must be less than 250 and we get t1 and t2 less than 250 pounds so this means that if t3 carries uh, 250 pounds then t1 is 70 pounds and t2 is 105 pounds but in the problem statement it is said that uh, determine the maximum weight of the crate that can be suspended so now the weight is we have the relationship between the weight and t1 so we can say that the weight is 53 divided by 14 and t1 so t1 is 70 so this is 53 53 divided by 14 multiply by 70 so this gives me weight equals to 265 pounds so now if cable t3 carries a maximum load of 250 pounds the weight that the maximum weight that can be supported by this by these three cables is 265 pounds so this is the solution of uh, problem 355 i hope this will help you in your learning let me know in the comments if it helps in your learning also subscribe engineers academy for such more problems from Hebler Statics.